Hello and welcome to The Pomegranate Girl. My name is Annie and you are watching my knitting slash sewing slash crafting podcast. Um, I'm coming to you from Bristol in the southwest of England and you're really welcome. So today is a bit of a different episode. I am going to be speaking about my knit along, <laughs> which sounds really funny to say and I feel like massive imposter syndrome and very out of my depth and yeah um so to kind of celebrate um hitting a milestone on this channel and also I suppose mainly as a thank you to all the lovely people who comment share who I interact with um, within the knitting community and fibre community in general. Um, and yeah, just a thank you for being so welcoming and so lovely. Um, I'm going to host a knit along. Um, yeah, and this idea has kind of been brewing in the back of my mind um, for a little while. And it was really inspired by one pattern, which I will talk about a bit later. Um, and yeah, I really just needed some enabling. So um, this is a slightly different knit along in that it has a theme um, and the theme, uh, the, the whole knit along is going to be called the Story Knits Cow, um, which stands for knit along. Um, and the theme is to knit an item that is inspired by one of your favourite stories or so that could be a film, it could be a book, it could be a TV show, it could be poetry, anything that constitutes as being a story. Um, and to then at the same time, either read, watch, uh, reread. It doesn't have to be something maybe you've, uh, it doesn't have to be maybe your favourite book or story, but it, yeah, just a book or story um and yeah and read or watch alongside um so yeah that's the general premise I've written myself a very detailed series of notes so I don't forget anything um the other kind of way that you can enter is by knitting with a yarn that has been inspired by a story so there's a lot of yarn dyers um who uh, kind of you I mean obviously inspired by lots of things um who kind of there is I know of a few companies that like dye and their colorways are named after novels um or characters in novels so you could use something like that I think that would be really really lovely um and yeah I'm gonna talk a little bit about the rules first and then I'm gonna talk about what I'm going to be knitting um, and then I'm going to talk about at the end about some pattern suggestions um, and I will also I'm going to just choose a few of my favourites but I'll put a longer list down below and I'm sure there are so you know there are so many patterns in the world um, it could even be something you make up yourself I suppose it doesn't have to be a pattern um, yeah don't it's quite an open kind of interpretation it was really just um yeah, I want to, I obviously talk a lot about, well, I talk a little bit about reading um, on my channel and sometimes I talk, have I ever talked about, I'd like to start talking about other things like films and TV shows, just like at the end. So I know not all of you are interested <laughs> in hearing me ramble about what books I'm reading. Um, so yeah, um, and I, yeah, I'll have a full list down below of all the, um, patterns that I know of or would think would be suitable or just as a like a kind of a list of inspiration. So the knit along is going to start on the 20th of March which is the spring equinox slash vernal equinox and it's also Ostara if you um, are familiar with pagan traditions. Um, it's not something I'm directly like influenced by but it's something I find really interesting. Um, so yeah, that's when it's going to start. Um, coincidentally, that is around the time of my birthday. <laughs> um, so yeah, I wanted it to, to be fairly soon, but also give you guys enough time to kind of prepare. Um, and then it is going to end on the 21st of June, which is the summer solstice. Um, so yeah, 
I figured that gives you nearly three, just over three months. Um, and you don't have to finish anything. You can just start and you could enter a whip that you're currently working on. You could enter with something new and it doesn't have to be finished. If you do finish, that's wonderful. Um, I'm aiming to finish some things. Um, but yeah, it's kind of going to be quite go with the flow and yeah, pretty straightforward and not too, too complicated. Um, so yeah, it's going to run, I'm trying to remember all this information that I've written down. Um, it's going to run on two places. It's going to run on Ravelry and on Instagram. So on Ravelry, I am going to, or I will have by the time this video goes up, uh, put up a pomegranate girl Ravelry group, which sounds ridiculous when I say it. It sounds like I have very high estimations of myself, um, but that's just like the most practical solution. Um, and there will be a, yeah, two threads that initially, one will be like a chatter thread so you can talk and like discuss your plans and what you'd like to do. And yeah, maybe if other people are reading or watching the same thing, just all kind of chatter and yeah, communication. And then the other one will be an entry thread where you post photos and that will be like your method of entry for Ravelry. On Instagram, um, there will be a hashtag, um, which will be the story knits cal. Um, I'll leave all this information down below, um, like written information. And there'll also be an Instagram post so you can check there too. Um, but yeah, there will, you will be able to use the cal, um, and that will be an entry. Um, so yeah, maybe I should, maybe I'll rethink that. Maybe there'll be a cal for entry, like a hashtag for entries and a hashtag just for the cal. Um, we'll see. I will have, um, I'll maybe announce that on Instagram and keep you guys updated on here as well. Um, yeah, that is it in terms of the rules. And yeah, I think that's all like the main details. I, of course, will be doing prizes. Um, so at the moment, I've just got two prizes that I've bought myself because, you know, this is also a way of really me giving back and it's very important and it's like I'm so grateful to this community um and to be able to talk about yarn with you know fellow minded people is really special it's something I really am grateful for um so yeah it's a way of giving back so I wanted to quickly discuss what prizes I've got at the moment this is what I have I'm potentially might get some other prizes um we'll see obviously it's just me um so yeah, we'll see if there's anything else, but I will keep you guys updated. So firstly, I both of these prizes are from small businesses who obviously I really want to support. So the first is a set of stitch markers from the lovely Ophelia at Orchid's Heart. And oh, there you go. These are Alice in Wonderland themed stitch markers. So I'm trying to turn it around so you can see. And so you can see there's a the little rabbit, there is some um, like playing cards, keys, um, and I love Ophelia's stitch markers. They're my favourites to use. I think they're lovely. And I saw she was doing a shop update with Alice in Wonderland themed stitch markers and I thought it was perfect. So yeah, one person will win these. Um, and yeah, they're the only real like stitch markers I use because I love them so much. And the other prize is a skein of yarn from Rowan Lane Fibres, who is a UK based, I believe she's, they're originally from South Africa. Um, and they use uh, natural dyes to um, create beautiful colours. So this is a gorgeous Romy <laughs> uh, tone. This colour is called Copper Rose, which I think is very apt. And it is a fingering weight base. Uh, the base is called Repose. And it is 50% Corriedale and 50% no mohair. It's non-superwash and it is 400 metres by 100 grams. Um, and I think this has been dyed with Kutch. Um, that's what it says on the label. And it is just beautiful. Um, 
I think the colours in this are so gorgeous and the yarn is really soft. Um, yeah. Oh, it's just lovely. And I'd never actually purchased from Rowan Lane Fibres before, but I saw their yarns. I've been following them for a while and I saw that they'd had an update and I thought, I don't need any more yarn at the moment. Um, I just feel a bit overwhelmed on my stash at the moment, but I really wanted to support their business and I will definitely be buying some myself in the future because it is just beautiful. They have some really stunning colours and their ethics are just so admirable and yeah um so this is what you will win so there'll be two winners so whoever um when the time comes whoever contacts me first when I announce the winners they will get to choose what they receive and I will ship internationally um obviously there are potentially some countries that I won't be able to ship to but we'll try and find a workaround um so yeah I'll ship anywhere in the world um may take a bit of time say if you're ordering from i don't know australia or not ordering but if you're in australia or um yeah south africa maybe uh or even the us or like south america um but i uh, yeah we will work together and the other thing i forgot to mention is i know that ravelry is obviously not accessible to everyone um but i also know that not everyone has an instagram account so if you would like to participate and you can't use Ravelry and you maybe don't want to set up an Instagram account, get in touch with me and I'll see what I can do. Maybe we could have another system with emails, emails um, and as counting as an entry. But that is I'm I'm not promising anything because that's quite a lot of work. But I would I really want to make this as inclusive as possible. Um, and yeah I hope that all makes sense um if you've got any questions just get in contact with me you can leave me a comment down below I'll do my best to respond as quickly as I can or I will or yeah message me on Instagram message me on Ravelry I'm usually a bit slower on Ravelry so don't check it as often but yeah so I wanted to quickly talk about what I will I am, I am planning on knitting and as I mentioned earlier there is really one pattern that inspired this knit along and it is the Norfolk in Paris sweater by Vanessa Pelisa and it is I'll have inserted a picture here or here and it is a beautiful top-down colorwork sweater inspired by one of uh, my favorite novels and <laughs> coincidentally um i believe vanessa vanessa in also loves this book and that book is mariana by monica dickens this is published by persephone who if you are not familiar with my channel you'll be like who are persephone um they are a publisher and bookshop who publish um out of print 20th century novels um and by mostly by women but by all genders um i'd say about 90 percent of their titles are from female writers but yeah they do carry things uh carry works from other genders as well and this is a coming of age novel i think it was maybe the first persephone book i ever read i read it when i was about 17 um just a few years ago now um and it I'll read you the back because as we all know I'm not very good at descriptions. Um, it says Mariana describes a young girl's growth towards maturity in the 1930s. We see Mary at school in Kensington and on holiday in Somerset, her love for her cousin Dennis, her attempts to go to drama school, her year in Paris learning dressmaking and getting engaged to the wrong man. Like Dusty Answer, I Capture the Castle and The Pursuit of Love, this is a novel about a girl encountering life and love which is also funny, readable and perceptive and a marvellous description of a certain kind of English life at a certain moment in time. Um, so I think that encapsulates what this novel is about beautifully. I think I really related to this when I read it and every time I have reread it I have found Mary a very engaging character and I've loved the story so I was browsing Vanessa's patterns one day and I saw that she had this beautiful colour work sweater um I think it came out at the beginning of last year and it's actually inspired by Mariana which I feel like is quite a niche 
obviously it's out of print it was republished by Persephone in the maybe late 90s early 2000s so it's not really a popular novel I suppose um so I was quite surprised um and it was just it seemed like a very amazing coincidence um so yeah I will be knitting that sweater I'll show you the yarn that I've got so um I believe Vanessa originally calls for woolen twine rustics is it rustic merino sport um in the pattern which I is not something that's really accessible I live in the UK and uh Yule of I believe is how you pronounce her name of woolen twine um I, she is based in I believe near Berlin in Germany and obviously with with Britain leaving the EU unfortunately um there are, it's very complex getting things buying things from sellers in the EU um there just seems to be quite I mean I guess it's we I've always known that I've paid like customs on something arriving from America but we never had to pay customs on things arriving from the EU and it's all just a bit complicated and the shipping is a lot and it's also some yeah a lot it's very it's quite a complicated process and I also know that you'll um in her last shop update there wasn't any of the rusty merino sport so um which is completely fine but so I decided to go with an alternative and that is um a yarn I've used before which is the Ulysse um and it is uh Dererum Natura and this is an 100% non super wash merino um that is from Europe I believe the majority of it is from France um and then other parts of Europe as well in like the same kind of area so I think maybe Portugal or Spain um and it's a lovely sport weight yarn you could also knit it at a DK gauge and um, that's what I've done before but it's just lovely I spoke about this yarn in my last episode so this is the colour I'm going to use for the main body and it is uh, Poivre Aisselle sorry for my French pronunciation it's going to be bad and then the contrast colours I'm going to use are these three. So the first one is Arable, which is this like beautiful, oh gosh, it's got fluff on it. Um, this like beautiful coppery rust colour, which we all know. It's one of my, another one of, these two are basically my favourite colours. Um, along with this one, which is Caramel which you'll have seen in my latest episode. It's this beautiful, like, golden brown. And then the last one is Cell, which is, like, a very pure cream. So, yeah, I think these are going to look really beautiful together. They're quite similar to what Vanessa used in her original sample, um, which, I, which I really love. This, she used a yellow instead of this brown. Um, so, yeah, I think these look really lovely together um so yeah i am going to knit that along with reading rereading this lovely book um i'll link this below in case you're interested um and also obviously links to all the patterns and then i am going to also try and knit or start to knit yeah and i'm not promising i'll finish that jumper in the three months i'm a slow jumper knitter um I am going to try and knit a pair of socks with this beautiful yarn from Will and Wine by the Studio. So I bought this in a D stash and it was post us leaving the EU. So I just knew that it would probably be, it was quite soon after I started knitting, but I knew that they'd, it would be really difficult to try and get my hands on it. And I bought this from Harriet. Yeah, it was Harriet from Wildwood Stitches whose project bags I talk about all the time. Um, and this is uh, Yule's uh, Corriedale sock, which is 100% Corriedale wool. It's non super wash, there's no nylon. Um, it's 400 metres by 100 grams, and this is the colourway mist. It's this beautiful, as you can see, I mean, I'm wearing this grey shawl. This is more of like a green. It's almost like a really pale eucalyptus colour. It's beautiful. And I've had it in my stash for yeah over a year now and I've not really I did have a pattern in mind and then 
when I was kind of thinking about this knit along, I thought this would be perfect. So I'm either going to knit the Elven, Elven Woods, yeah, the Elven Woods socks, which I'll own set photo of, uh, by This Handmade Life, which is inspired by The Lord of the Rings um, and The Hobbit and the whole uh, Middle Earth universe. Universe? Yeah, universe. Um, and because I've really been craving rewatching Lord of the Rings, I probably won't read them, which is a bit sacrilegious. Um, I've read The Hobbit. <laughs> um, I did. I grew up watching Lord of the Rings. My mum is a really big fan of the books and the films. Um, and so I grew. Yeah, I grew up watching them with my mum, and. Yeah, I've tried reading them. My mum loves a bit. She re she rereads them um, every couple of years, usually. Um, and I've just never been able to get into them. Um, I don't know if maybe that's because I don't read as much fantasy as I used to, but maybe I should retry. I haven't tried reading them for a while. Um, so, yeah. But, so I would definitely be watching the films and not reading the books if I knit that pattern. Or I might do the whistle best. No whistle down socks uh by Rach is it Rachel yeah Rachel Fletcher and these are of course um inspired by Lady Whistledown from Bridgerton which is a series of books by Julia Quinn and you're probably familiar with the Netflix show which came out last year yeah last year um the second season is coming out in March and I might knit those instead. We'll see. We'll see what I'm in the mood for. Um, I'd like to knit both pairs. I'm just, yeah, don't know. I'll use this yarn for either of those pairs. The other idea I had was the, I believe it's the Var socks by Fibre Tales, Laka, Laka of Fibre Tales. Um, her recently released sock pattern. And I would, this is more of an example of, I guess, something inspired by that's seems a bit indirect but uh the secret garden it's this beautiful sock pattern with like embroidered I think it's partially embroidery and partially knitting um like flowers around just under the bottom of the cuff and they're beautiful um so yeah I would probably reread the secret garden because I think that would correlate really nicely um so yeah we'll see I've got a few different ideas but yeah, I just really want to use this sock yarn and get it out of stash and try it because, yeah, I can't believe I haven't used it yet. Um, I've just got so much, like, non-superwash, no nylon sock yarn to try and it's a bit overwhelming. And I've told myself I'm not allowed to buy any more until I use quite a bit of it up. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I thought I would quickly discuss, oh, this was supposed to be a short video and as per it being me um, and who likes to ramble it's not going to be a short video um, yeah I thought I'd quickly talk over and show you some other patterns that I thought you might be interested in knitting so of course there's the Norfolk in Paris sweater if anyone would like to join me I would love that I think it would be really nice but I appreciate it's a sweater um, but yeah it'd be lovely if anyone wanted to join me um, Another pattern I found was the Hobbiton Vest, which is by Fable Knitwear. They actually have loads of beautiful patterns in either with names inspired by novels. There's, I think there's the Gondor Vest and the Aeon Blouse, which although it's not necessarily, I, I, I just read that and think of Lord of the Rings, um, but they've got some other lovely patterns inspired by different stories. Um, I love the Hobbiton vest, I'd love to knit it, um, but I've got a few other slipovers that I'd like to knit first. Um, there is the Bronte Sister Shawl by Lindsay Fowler. Again, it's a really beautiful uh, lace, I think it's a fingering weight shawl. And she also, I believe, has the Bennett Sister Shawl, which is inspired by Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Um, those are both beautiful. I just don't wear a lot of triangle shawls, otherwise I would definitely be knitting the Bennett sister shawl. Um, then there's the Elven Woods, which I've already spoken about. Um, the 
Cabot Cove Cowl by <laughs> Bronte Swanwick and this is a lovely cowl design um, that is inspired by I believe a jumper that the main character in Murder She Wrote it wears in one of the episodes. I cannot remember for the life of me the main character. Is it Jessica Fletcher? It's Jessica Fletcher I think in Murder She Wrote which I loved. I started watching it in 2020 um uh yeah 2020 it was when I was interning and it's a really great I mean I'm sure you all know it. it's like a crime series it's like a cozy mystery series um it's lovely <laughs> I just haven't watched it in a while but yeah that was inspired by that um and yeah it's a really lovely color work cowl um there are also the Marianne socks by Sabrina Justice. She has the Eleanor socks as well, and they are inspired by Eleanor and Marianne Dashwood from Sense and Sensibility. Um, yeah, another sock pattern I'd really love to knit. Um, and yeah, lastly on my list is the Whistledown socks by Rachel Fletcher. So yeah, I will have many more suggestions down below. And yeah, I am so excited. I hope you all think this is a good idea um and maybe some of you will want to join in um as I said it's quite a casual knit along um it's definitely not going to be super strict um in terms of interpretation but it would be lovely to kind of hear your ideas and hear what you're maybe if you do want to join in what you'd knit and yeah I kind of was a bit worried about talking about this because I was worried no one would want to join um so if that's the case I'll just happily knit on things myself and maybe keep the prizes for a, a different giveaway but yeah it would be so lovely if you could join me um in this story knits cal and yeah I think that's everything I've got to say um thank you so much for watching this little special episode um and yeah, feel free to message me again on here, on Ravelry, on Instagram if you've got any questions um, or if you want to know anything else. And I will see you soon for another normal episode where I'll talk about my finished objects, my whips and future plans and what books I'm reading. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all again soon. Bye! <laughs>